In this video, we will factor polynomial expressions using the greatest common factor. First, let's review a little bit about how to expand polynomials. So if I'm multiplying this a times 3a plus 7, that's going to look like 3a squared plus 7a. If I were to distribute this negative 2m across m squared plus 6m minus 1, I'm going to get this polynomial, negative 2m cubed minus 12m squared plus 2m. And if I were to multiply 5xy times x minus 2y, I'd get 5x squared y minus 10xy squared. This is what it looks like when we multiply those. But this time what we want to do is we want to factor. Factoring is the process of breaking down an expression into its product. So instead of starting with something that we're going to be multiplying together, we're actually going to be starting from this side and working backwards from 5x squared y minus 10xy squared to its factored form. So we're going to break up this expression into its parts, into 5xy and x minus 2y. Now, there are lots of ways to factor. We're going to learn about several methods used to factor polynomials. The method that we're going to focus on in this video is called the greatest common factor method. And even when we use other methods, we will still use GCF first. So the rules for finding and factoring by GCF is we want to look at the coefficients first. Remember, the coefficients are those numbers in front of the variables. We want to make sure that a variable is in common to all terms before we can factor it out. And in order to factor it out, we're going to be dividing all the terms by the GCF and then writing our answer in factored form. If an expression can't be factored, it is called a prime expression. The same way we talk about prime numbers. If a number isn't divisible by anything other than itself and one, we call it a prime number. Works the same way with polynomials. So let's look at, at this expression 3x plus 12 and let's identify the GCF. So we're going to follow our rules. Look at the coefficients first. So the coefficients here are 3 and 12. Well, what factors do 3 and 12 have in common? Well, we know we can pull out a 3. Both 3 and 12 are divisible by 3. Now, look at the uh, variables. A variable must be common to all terms to be a GCF. So notice that both terms would have to have an x if we were to pull it out. But only this first term has one. So our GCF is only 3. So that means that we're going to have to divide out a 3 from both terms. When we do that, we get x plus 4 left. But the factored form is going to look like what we would have had to multiply together to get 3x plus 12. So we have to use that GCF out front times x plus 4. These would be the two things that we would have multiplied to get 3x plus 12. This next problem is on your own. Let's take a look at 5x plus 30y. So look at the coefficients first. Do 5 and 30 have anything in common? Well, we know 5 and 30 are both divisible by 5. Look at the variables now. Do we have any variables in common? No, so only thing we can pull out is a 5. So we're going to be dividing by 5, and that leaves us with x plus 6y. To write it in factored form, our GCF goes out front times what we got when we divided it out. The way we can check our work is if we were to multiply the 5 back into that binomial, we would get 5x plus 30y, which is what we started with. The next problem is on your own. Here we see 21cd minus 3d. Look at the coefficients first. We see we have a 3 in common. Now we can look at the variables. 
This time we have D in common. So this time my GCF is going to contain a variable. So I'm going to be dividing out 3D from this expression. So 21CD divided by 3D gives me 7C. Negative 3D divided by 3D gives me negative 1. So I use what I got when I divided with my GCF and write it in that factored form. So 3D multiplied by 7C minus 1 would get that original expression back. The next is on your own. So we're identifying what these terms have in common. I have 15A squared B minus 30AB. You might say, well, 15 and 30 have 5 in common, but is that the greatest common factor? So is there a number larger than 5 that could go into both? Well, 15 and 30 both have 15 in common, so we could pull out a 15. Notice that both terms have an A. Also, both terms have a B. How many A's could I pull out of both here? Well, I could pull out one here, but I have two here. I want you guys to take a look at this term, the negative 30AB. Would I be able to pull two A's out of that? The answer is no. So the greatest amount of A's I could pull out is A to the first power. And same with the B. So my GCF is 15AB. So I'm going to be dividing out 15AB to be left with A minus 2. To write this in factored form, I have 15AB times A minus 2. The next problem is on your own. What do these two terms have in common? Look at the coefficients first. 1 and 3. They don't have anything in common other than 1. So we're not going to pull out a 1 because that's not going to change anything. So next look at the variables. These two terms have an x in common, and we can only pull out an x to the first power. So our GCF is x. When we divide both terms by x, we're left with x plus 3y. And we're going to write that in factored form, x, which is our GCF, times x plus 3y. The next problem is on your own. Here notice we have the 18 a squared b c squared minus 48 a b c cubed. So we have to look at the coefficients first. What's going to be the largest number that we could pull out of both 18 and 48? Well, we know it's going to be 6. How many a's could we pull out of both? a to the first. If we tried to pull out a squared, we wouldn't have enough in this second expression. We could take out a b to the first power. And notice we have enough to take out a c squared from both terms. So I, my GCF then is 6abc squared. So that's what I'm going to be dividing out from both terms. So I'm going to be left with 3a minus 8c and then write it in your factored form. 6ABC squared is my GCF times 3A minus 8C. These two problems are on your own. Next, 6Y to the fourth plus 14Y cubed minus 10Y squared. Notice here 6, 14, and 10. The largest number that I can pull out of all of those is a 2. A lot of them have different factors, but the biggest thing that I can pull out of all three is a 2. Notice that they all have y's in common. How many y's can I pull out of every term? So I can pull out y squared from this one. Can I pull out y cubed from any of the others? Because I can't pull y cubed out of all of them, the greatest amount or the greatest common factor is going to be y squared. And we also had that 2 on there as well. So I'm dividing out 2y squared from all of those terms, which leaves me with 3y squared 
plus 7y minus 5 and write it in that factored form. 2y squared times 3y squared plus 7y minus 5. These next two problems are on your own. Our last example here, 12a to the fifth b squared minus 36a to the fourth b cubed minus 6a squared b squared. So look at the coefficients first. The largest number that we can pull out of 12, 36, and 6 is going to be 6. How many a's could we pull out of each term? The greatest amount of a's that we can pull out is a squared. What's the largest amount of b's that we can pull out? The largest amount of b's is going to be b squared as well. So 6a squared b squared is our GCF. When I divide that out, I'm going to end up with 2a cubed minus 6a squared b and 6a squared b squared divided by 6a squared b squared is 1. Then write it in that factored form. And this last example is on your own.